He's going to help you finish well. But you know what? You've got to have patience. Mm -hmm. And let patience have her perfect work. Mm -hmm. My family is diseased. We have a disease on my father's side of the family called polycystic kidney disease. There's about 40 of us that's on dialysis with kidney failure, and my kidneys failed last year. I'm on dialysis. I'm about to drive my husband crazy. I do it at home. He has to lift bags for me. He has to tote things and do all kinds of stuff which he never complains about. And put up with me. And we had a man come from California who saw my name on a prayer letter, Assemblies of God missionary to campuses. And he was tested to be a potential donor. And we're hoping maybe he'll work out. But if he doesn't, I'm not going to get myself in a snit. I'm going to keep doing my dialysis. And I'm going to keep on in my ministry. I have a tube right here. i got to be hooked up to a machine every night so I don't die. I'm on life support. I know I don't look so bad off, but I am bad off. I'd be dead without my machine. That's just the way it is. And I'm not looking for, 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 for sympathy either. I'm going to kill that person with the cell phone. <laughs> it might, I think it's mine. <laughs> no, I think Wayne turned it off. No, um, I had to learn patience. I got to clean a wound. I got to be a nurse. I got to put on a mask. I got to tell my cats to leave the room. My husband has to wear a mask. We got to turn off AC, turn off heat, get everything still in the room to, to put all sorts of things together to do this. But you know what? That's not so bad. What would be bad is if I had said, why did you do this to me? And I don't say that to him. Neither do I say he can't heal me if he wanted to. How many of you have that little fist of yours up like this right now? Why did you take my drugs away from me? Why did you take my girlfriend? I served you. You took my boyfriend. Why did you take my mama? Why did you take my daddy? Why? Whatever. You know, God may be trying to get you to open that tight little hand in praise so you can receive him. He can't put nothing in a tight little hand. You need to thank him. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. But this is the will of God. Yeah, but, but I'm going to just say it. Brother Osteen said this was my best life now, and I'm supposed to have money, and I'm supposed to have stuff. Money and stuff. That's going to make me a successful Christian, duh. Brother Osteen, you're wrong. You're precious, and I think you're faithful to your wife. I like that. But you're wrong. Money and stuff. Ain't going to fix you. And it's not going to make you get closer. No, 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 no. You will have a hard time. Because those who will live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. I got women in my church. The husband divorced them because of Jesus. I got another sister in the Lord in Manhattan. The husband is just dragging her through the dirt. Taking her house. Taking her children. Because she loves Jesus. You will lose something for Jesus. You have to lose something for Jesus. You have to. Oh, you're not his. Oh, yes. There are piercings that you have to have. Pierced are the feet that follow him. Is your piercing going to be in your hands or your side or your feet? Where's that piercing going to be? But you rejoice and you look up and you say, Thank you, Lord. This is a sign. I belong to you. I'm wedded to you. Our marital vows say, till death do us part. And then we got eternal life. 
We have to be faithful to him. Are you faithful to Jesus tonight? Are you a fair weather friend of Jesus that if it's going to go okay? If the music's good and the church looks cool and you don't have to be bothered with too much, you will serve him? Or will you slosh through the sewage to get to him? What if our country takes the downturn, really takes the downturn? What are you going to do? Curse him? Are you going to find that wonderful freedom in Jesus that when you've lost everything for him, he's there to give you everything? He'll feed you. He'll put shoes on your feet. He'll put clothes on your back. He'll take you through. I believe this should minister to somebody tonight. I trust that it does minister to somebody tonight. Because let's shoot down all the phony faces. Let's shoot down the happy. You know, one of the reasons I didn't become a Christian until I was 24 years old is because of all those Southern gospel singers with a great big smile. <laughs> I can't stand those people smiling in my face. <laughs> What's that song? Smiling faces, smiling faces. They don't mean a thing. I love that song. Before I was saved, oh, I love that song. Is that The Temptations? I can't remember. Oh, you know, that's a wonderful song. <laughs> then he talks about stabbing you in the back. <laughs> that's a good song. That's a good song. You can have a devotional off of that song. That's what I said. If you can do this, you can do smiling faces. Come on. <laughs> Praise God. But I, 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 really, I really met Jesus as a teenage girl. I thought about him a lot. My friend Belinda got saved, and she witnessed to me. We were 16. She said, oh, Linda, I got saved, and I spoke in tongues. I said, Belinda, you have a mental disorder. Something <laughs> happened to you. I'm so sorry, because I'm a, a head person here. You got something wrong with you, Belinda. You need to see a psychologist. We don't speak in tongues. There's something wrong with that. Well, the time passed. Belinda got a brain tumor. Then she got another brain tumor, and she died at 50. And when I went to see her mother, she said, you know, Belinda's going to have a crown of glory for leading you to the Lord. I said, she sure is. She sure is. And whenever I got saved, she's the first person I called. My little, her little light shined. And she suffered. I didn't see no smiling faces from her. I saw a girl with her head shaved off and a great big thing and a tube and a shunt in her head. Used to be a pretty girl with a brain tumor, two brain tumors. That's reality, friends. That's, re that's reality. Do you want reality or do you want the Easter Bunny? What is it you're looking for? I love Santa, but all that stuff, what is it? And are you going to sit here over Christmas and go, oh, <laughs> I've been doing some of that. Don't you do it. Don't you do it. Thank God you are where you are. Thank God you are where you are. Don't start missing some, some parties. Don't start missing uh, some... Uh, I, I went by... We have a little one-room apartment in Lincoln Center. Would you believe this? A little studio. It's a, as big as about four of these tables. <laughs> right? Maybe five tables. And I walked out and Channel 13 and Channel 21 are now on the corner in Juilliard. You know, Channel 13, the educational channel. And I walked by, and all these pretty fancy people, I wasn't envious, I was laughing. They were all sipping wine. They were all drinking wine. And I just looked in the window and I said, you all look like a bunch of winos. <laughs> they were well-dressed winos. <laughs>